This is the Fujifilm X-T5, the latest and greatest of the X-T line from Fujifilm. It's been totally redesigned from the sensor, the processor, the body, all of it into this latest generation of Fujifilm cameras. So let's check out the usability, the new features, image quality, and who should buy this camera. Before we start, I wanna thank the team at b and and their creator program for lending me this camera for the last month. Obviously a uh, thank you to Fujifilm as well. It's definitely not a camera that I get to keep, but obviously you can see a few other Fujifilm cameras that I do own on this table. So checking out their newest line of cameras was obviously something I was really interested in. If this video does help you make any sort of purchasing decision, links to the camera on b and will be found in the description below. Now obviously one of the things that people love about Fujifilm is just the styling and the vintage kind of aesthetic of the cameras. I've always loved that they have just the old manual dials on most of their cameras. And I'm a very kind of tactile photographer where I love having that whole exposure triangle literally right here. And while you can definitely do it with dials on other cameras, and I'm sure you can set this up to do that as well, I personally just love being so intentional about changing my settings in that way. Now some of the biggest differences obviously between the X-T3, X-T4, and then up to this new generation is going to be that 40 megapixel sensor. You're cramming a lot of information and pixels and detail into such a small little camera. So for things like landscapes, fine art, even commercial work, things like that where you want that added bit of resolution, it is definitely really helpful moving from that kind of 24, 26 range up into the 40s, if that's something you're interested in. And one of the other bigger features is the X-T line has always been more photo focused than video, although I do know a lot of my friends, especially in the wedding industry, that have used the X-T4 cameras for a long time and really loved them. You now have gone back from that fully articulating screen back to a more kind of photo centric screen that pulls out like this. And then in the same way that actually my GFX camera does, you can do that, but also for vertical shooting, which for me is super helpful. And as a working photographer, that is one of my favorite implementations of a pure photography style thing. I love having the waist level that you're almost exactly in line with the lens and the sensor and everything. And then I do shoot a lot of vertical images um, on wedding days. So being able to just pop this down and do that if I'm gonna get it at a lower angle, I just prefer it so much more than an articulating screen for photography. Now, as far as the body goes in the hand, I have larger hands and I will say that it feels a little bit small with a larger lens like this. I would definitely prefer, you know, um, some of the smaller lenses on a body like this, that makes it feel quite a bit more comfortable because you're not having as much strain on your hand on this grip here, which isn't nothing but isn't deep like um, the X-H series. So if I was going to be someone that was gonna use this camera as my primary tool and wanted to use some of the larger lenses, I would most likely want to get some sort of grip for this. But for the smaller lenses, I feel like these work really well and I would see no issue kind of balancing this thing out. The other first thing I noticed that is obviously going to be uh, color specific to this one is that you can see in the X100F, and then the last generation of the X100V, the XE4, the silver that you're getting out of here is actually really different. So the XE4, the X100V is a very like matte finish. You can see that it's just kind of like flat. And personally, this is what I really like. I, I really love the finish of the XE4 and the X100V. They're very similar and it's not just kind of like that sparkly silver, but then the older X100F and the new X-T5 definitely kind of share that more reflective style of paint or whatever it might be. So personally, it's not my favorite, but as someone who um, needs multiple cameras as their primary, I would probably, if I was buying two of these, I'd buy one of each because I personally like that a lot. 
Now, as far as our connections go over here, we have a mic jack, a USB-C that gives you power delivery, which is absolutely my favorite thing in any camera. And then you have a micro HDMI port, which video people will complain about forever and ever because they can be a little bit finicky. But for a photography kind of based and uh, focused camera, it's not something I would expect to have a full size port. So definitely not the end of the world for me. You have dual card slots, both are UHS-2 compatible. You aren't getting any of those CF Express cards in here, but for sports stuff, if you need like quick bursts of a few seconds of um, some moments or whatever, if you slap a V90 card in here, you're definitely gonna get a lot of performance. This camera is rated to do 15 photos per second in RAW and I think up to a thousand in JPEG. That ups to 20 photos per second if you use the electronic shutter and moves up to 37 photos in RAW. So it's definitely more than I would ever need for my personal work in speed and stuff like that. But if you are going to do some more light uh, sports work where you don't need to just like lay on the shutter, it can definitely be something that's really helpful and useful. Now, other than resolution and the screen, the thing that I was most kind of excited about uh, in these new cameras was the improved autofocus. In this latest round from the X-T4, the X-E4, the X-100V, all of those cameras have had autofocus that I would consider to be at a level that I would be totally comfortable and um, usable in photographing a wedding, which for me is like the, the kind of baseline standard. I've used both of these cameras at weddings before and felt that they totally kept up with a wedding day. And the funny thing is after using these cameras, going back and going kind of back and forth, I did some tests with the X-E4 and then with the X-T5. The autofocus just recognizes bodies, humans, faces, eyes a lot quicker. Again, not saying that the X-E4 is bad, but this is just the next level of integration of those kind of things. And it was just something that I did really, really appreciate about the X-T5. ISO and noise goes, here is where I felt like it was actually kind of interesting. So I put my XE4 on a tripod and just took a series of photos going from ISO 200 up to 12,800. Then I did the same thing with the X-T5. Then I exported all of those images after just white balancing them off of the card there. And then I just resized the X-T5 images to be at that, I think 26 megapixels instead of 40, just to give us a fair kind of like comparison over what things actually looked like. And to be honest, they pretty much look identical. The camera isn't going to give you better high ISO performance, but you're gaining a fairly significant amount of resolution while not having any real detriment to your high ISO performance. So if you're an X-T3, X-T4, X-Pro3, X-E4, you know, that generation of camera users, and you're looking for better high ISO performance, that's where I think something like the X-H2S is most likely going to be better for that. But if you were happy with that high ISO performance from that generation of cameras, 
Just know that in my testing at least, it was basically the exact same once you kind of just resize things to be the same output. So overall the gain in resolution doesn't diminish your high ISO performance one bit. The other thing that I don't utilize enough out of Fujifilm is just their film simulations. And even if I don't use those film simulations for my actual work, being able to see that in the viewfinder has always been a really kind of fun thing for me. And I think honestly for maybe content creators or people who are, you know, photography enthusiasts, but aren't necessarily going to want to sit down and go through raw images. I think that even though obviously they're a very big part of the whole Fujifilm ecosystem and just the perception of Fujifilm in general, I'm surprised that more people who don't want to like finagle with their images as much, don't lean into those even more. Between the dynamic range boost, the different curves options, the different color options, the different film simulations, you really can in these newer Fujifilm cameras get an image straight out of camera, even in a bunch of the auto modes that is really, really pleasing and frankly for most people is going to be a lot better than what they could get by doing it on their own in uh, somewhere like Lightroom. Now the other thing that this does is improves a ton on the video specs. The first of which is just the F-Log2 profile. It's very flat, very cinematic. It gives you a lot of ways to work in post. And then obviously the 4K image is great on here. The 4K HQ and the 6.2K are a little bit underwhelming because they have a 1.23 crop, I believe. Personally, if I was going to do even up to like 40, 50% video, I probably would go with the X-H2S and that X-H line. But if you're primarily a photographer and going to use video every once in a while to film some talking head stuff, send some stuff to clients, maybe get some B-roll, small YouTube stuff, it's definitely a possibility and something that would totally be worthwhile in checking out. Just know that the X-H2S is probably your better bet in that kind of range if you want to jump into that. A quick note that I forgot to film, uh, I actually did a overheating test and filmed for an hour and 22 or so minutes. The only reason it stopped is because the card ran out of space. So uh, overheating at least at room temperature doesn't seem like it was an issue at all. So uh, thumbs up to that. Overall, I think this, again, is a great upgrade to the XT line. It gives us a lot of things that photographers specifically are going to be interested in. Personally, if I could have one request about it, it would be that just like the X-H2 has the split between the X-H2 and the X-H2S, I would really love an X-T5S giving you that lower resolution sensor with a slightly faster readout and better high ISO performance. Because as a wedding photographer, better high ISO performance is higher on my list of things that I'm looking for than a higher resolution. But for around 1700 bucks, it's pretty hard to beat this camera and this system for both professional shoots and frankly, everyday kind of stuff. So thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Thanks again to B&H Creators for sending this over and to Fujifilm for getting it in my hands. I am bummed to have to send it back, but hopefully I can get more Fujifilm content on this channel as I definitely wanna check out their newer offerings and any potential things they might have in the future with these new sensors, processors, all that kind of stuff. I'm about this close to 50,000 subscribers, so thanks to everyone who has already subscribed. And if you haven't, and this video was super helpful, clicking the like button and the subscribe would be very beneficial to me. So thanks again, and I will see you all on the next one. <laughs>